Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video we'll be looking at section 1.8 which is going to cover absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities. So what we're going to do is look at some basic concepts of absolute value, then we're going to solve equations, and we're going to look at special cases of absolute value equations, and we're also going to solve absolute value inequalities and talk about the methods for solving less than and greater than. They have different methods, and we're going to look at some special cases of absolute value inequalities. So we've got our work cut out for us. Let's get started. Now the vertical bars are called absolute value bars and they indicate a number's distance from zero. You know a negative indicates that the number is to the left of zero on the number line and a positive number is to the right. Well, We want a number that just indicates not direction left or right but just distance from zero and that's what absolute value is. However a number without a sign is considered positive so except for zero Every number's absolute value is considered positive. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and the absolute value of positive 9 is 9. So now that you know that, when you see something like absolute value of x equals 3, that means x could have two different values. The absolute value of positive 3 is 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So we're going to see that absolute value equations usually give us two solutions. So our solution set for an equation like this would be written x equals curly braces, negative 3 and positive 3. Now note that this is not an interval, so we don't want to use brackets or parentheses. It's just the negative 3 and the positive 3 that are solutions, so we use curly braces to indicate that we're just listing those two numbers. Now this is going to be our procedure for solving absolute value equations, where you have the bars equal some number, and right now I'm assuming that that number is positive. This is our procedure. First, make sure the bars are isolated. If there are any other terms on the left side of the equation with the bars, you need to move those over to the right side. Any coefficients in front of the bars, divide both sides by that coefficient. Isolate the bars. Then, to remove the bars, write two equations. You'll have what was inside the bars equals the positive of what's on the right side, and what was inside the bars equals the negative of what's on the right side. And then you're going to solve each equation, and that's going to give you two answers. So remember, absolute value equations usually have two solutions. Now you can check your work if you want to, but this is not like radical equations where you had to check the solution as part of the solving process. So don't feel obligated to type that checking work into MyLabs Plus. You can do that on paper just for your own reassurance, but it's not a necessary part of the problem. Now if we have two sets of absolute value bars that are equal, then what's inside the bars is either the same or opposite. So if we have this kind of situation, absolute value of one expression, equals absolute value of the other expression, then we'll write two equations this way. We'll write what was inside the left bars equals what was inside the right bars, or what was inside the left bars equals the negative of what was inside the right bars. And notice that I've put the what was inside the right bars in parentheses because this will frequently be two terms and you'll need to distribute that minus sign. So write out both equations and solve. Here is our first example to go through together. We've got absolute value of 5 minus 3x equals 12. Okay, so these bars are already isolated, and so what we'll do is write two equations. Oh, notice that the right side is a positive number too. That's important. And what we'll do is we'll write two equations. What was inside the bars equals positive 12 what was inside the bars equals negative 12. These are two separate equations. Solve them both. They'll both require the same solving steps, but they'll get different answers. So on the first one, let's subtract 5 from both sides, and that leaves us negative 3x equals 7, and divide both sides by negative 3, and that leaves us x equals negative 7 thirds. On the right side, same steps. 
subtract 5 from both sides, but this time it leaves us negative 3x equals negative 17. And divide both sides by negative 3, and we get x equals positive 17 over 3 because negative divided by negative is positive. And then you could just put your answer in curly braces separated by a fraction. And when you're doing this in My Labs Plus, make sure that after you type negative 7 slash 3, make sure to hit the right arrow key to get your cursor out of the bottom of the fraction before you do the comma. And then you should be good to go. Now for part B, we have two sets of absolute value bars. And so remember what we're going to do is we're going to take what was inside the left set and set it equal to the positive of what was inside the right set. And then we're going to do it again, but put a negative in front of the right side. So our first equation is what was inside the left bars equals what was inside the right bars. And our second equation is what was inside the left bars equals the negative of what was inside the right bars. And notice that what was inside the right bars uh, is in, in parentheses now. So we'll need to distribute that negative. Okay, solving this equation first, let's subtract x from both sides. That leaves us 3x minus 3 equals 6. Now let's add 3 to both sides. That gives us 3x equals 9. And now divide both sides by 3, and that gives us x equals 3. And then on the right side, make sure to distribute this negative. And now let's add x to both sides. And that gives us 5x minus 3 equals negative 6. And now we'll add 3 to both sides. That gives us 5x equals negative 3. And our final answer is x equals negative 3 fifths. So both of these numbers are solutions. So we'll list them both in one pair of curly braces. Now here are two similar practice problems for you to try. These came from the homework exercises, and I hope you'll pause the video and try these on your own and then go through them with me and check your answers. Okay, let's try them together now. So here we have a pair of absolute value bars that are already isolated, and the right side is a positive number. So let's write our two equations without the bars. What's inside the bars equals positive 2, or what's inside the bars equals negative 2. Notice that when I take something out of the bars, it does not change. So what was inside the bars equals the positive of the right side, or what was inside the bars equals the negative of the right side. Now the solving process. So add 1 to both sides, divide both sides by 3. We get 3 over 3 is 1. And on the second one, same steps, different answer. Add 1 to both sides, 3x equals negative 1, divide both sides by 3, x equals negative 1 third. And so our two solutions here are 1 and negative 1 third. Now on the right side, I have two sets of bars equal to each other. So we can write that equation as what was in the left set of bars equals what was in the right set of bars, or what was in the left set of bars equals the negative of what was in the right set of bars. And then you can distribute that negative. Okay, here on the left, let's subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 4 from both sides and divide both sides by 3. So we get x equals negative 7 thirds there. And on the other one, let's distribute the negative and then we will add 5x to both sides and then we will add 3 to both sides and then we will divide both sides by 7. And so these are our two solutions, negative 7 thirds and negative 1 seventh. Now one place where students mess up on this type of problem is they forget to isolate the bars before writing their two equations. So you can't just say, oh, bars, and then write the two equations that are equal to positive 18 and negative 18, because you can only separate it into two equations if you have the bars isolated. So first, this positive 4 has to go. Let's first subtract 4 from both sides. And that will give us absolute value of 3x minus 7 equals 14. Now we can write our two equations. 3x minus 7 equals positive 14, or 3x minus 7 equals negative 14. To solve, add 7 to both sides, divide both sides by 3. The first one gives us 7. 
To solve the second one, add 7 to both sides. Divide both sides by 3. That one gives us negative 7 thirds. So the two solutions there are 7 and negative 7 thirds. Now here's another equation that has other things on the left side of the equation with the bar. So these things must be eliminated before we can write our two equations. Let's start by adding 5 to both sides. That's going to give us 6 times the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 30. Now I, I always get the question, can I distribute into the bars? And I say don't do it. It's not a good habit to start. Um, it's just better if you eliminate it. So let's divide both sides by 6. And that way we can have absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 5. And now we have isolated bars on the left, a positive number on the right, and we can write our two equations. 2x plus 5 equals positive 5, and 2x plus 5 equals negative 5. To solve, subtract 5 from both sides and divide both sides by 2, and the first solution is 0. And on the second equation, again, subtract 5 from both sides, divide both sides by 2, and the second solution is x equals negative 5. So our two solutions here are 0 and negative 5. Now remember I said that most of the time our absolute value equations give us two solutions, but it's not always true because if the right side is equal to 0, we'll only get one solution because 0 does not have a sign. 0 is just 0. So let's solve these two together. Uh, absolute value of 5x plus 15 equals 0. We take the bars off, but we only have one number. We don't have positive 0 and negative 0. We just have 0. And so when we solve this, we only get one solution, and that is x equals negative 3. Same thing on the next one. If the absolute value of 8x plus 5 equals 0, there is no positive 0 and negative 0. So if 8x plus 5 equals 0, then 8x is negative 5, and that means x equals negative 5 over 8. Now let's look at what happens when the right side of an absolute value equation is negative. We know absolute value cannot be negative. Therefore, if we have absolute value of a number equals a negative constant, that has no solution. How could we possibly have an x that we turn positive and then have that positive number equal a negative? That's not possible. So a, an equation like this has no solution. But remember to isolate the bars before you decide there's no solution. Because what happens a lot of times is students have, like, say, a negative 2 on the right side and an absolute value of x minus something like 7 on the left side. And if they would add 7 to both sides, they'd have a positive on the right. But they jump the gun, and because they see a negative here, they just say no solution. Make sure you don't do that. Make sure you isolate the bars before you decide there's no solution. Now, one like this, where we have absolute value of 2x plus 7 equals negative 3, the bars are isolated. So how is it possible that a number times 2 plus 7, whether that answer comes up positive or negative, the bars turn it positive, how is it possible that that positive number on the left equals a negative number on the right? That is not possible. So this kind of equation has no solution, or we could say the solution is the empty set.